everyone, this is Calimara here, and no, it's not calamari. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new to the pond, go ahead and take a dive. You might like it here. So, much like everyone else that has seen Across the Spider-Verse, I've had my life changed, my brain completely rewired, and I can no longer function like a regular human because I've had my mind blown by the artistic triumph I saw on screen. And that just made me not want to do anything but draw and improve and become Spider-Man myself. And so, there could be only one solution. Make a Spider-Sona. So that's what I'm doing today while giving some tips and ideas for your spider sonas based on my experience creating mine. This was also a great exercise in creating dynamic poses, because one of my favorite things about Spider-Man as a character ever since the Sam Raimi trilogy was his movement. For me personally, there isn't a single superhero that absorbs me into the flow and action like Spider-Man. Something about the high octane web slinging, rising and falling, and striking really cool poses really stuck with me since I was a kid. So I really wanted to take advantage of that precedent to do interesting poses with my spider sona. I was really inspired by the writers basing Pavitar's movements on a 2000 year old Indian martial art, so I wanted to base my spider sona's movements on Pajaksilat, a traditional Indonesian martial art which, fun fact, I actually practiced myself when I was in my teens. Because this is a persona of sorts, I think it's a great idea to integrate elements of your background into them, be it your culture, identity, life experiences, or extracurricular things you did. For example, if you learned a martial art, played a sport, or an instrument, or any sort of hobby you enjoy. You could use it as inspiration to add some extra flair and distinction to your spider sona be it in their movements, as elements in their costume, or both. It could even become part of their power set. I think it also helps make the spider sona more unique and personal to you. One of the things I enjoyed the most about Across the Spider-Verse was that not only did it hammer home the idea that anyone could be Spider-Man, it really emphasizes that Spider-Man could be anything. There really aren't any hard and fast rules to what Spider-Man should be like, so feel free to use these as a guideline for your spider sona. Number 1. All Spider-Man suits are commonly, but not exclusively, sleek and minimalistic, prioritizing ease of movement for their acrobatics and quick movements. Number 2. All Spider-Man masks have large, expressive, almost cat-like eyes that are my personal favorite part of the Spidey suit. Number 3. All Spider-Man suits incorporate some sort of cobweb or spider motif. And number 4. All Spider-Man suits cover the entirety of Spidey's body up to their necks, but not necessarily their heads. Though there are exceptions, like Paviter, who is barefoot and shows his hair, and Jessica Drew, whose face is pretty much completely visible. And this Spider-Woman, who to me looks a lot like MJ. Everything else is pretty much fair game. Of course, you don't have to follow this list either. If there's anything that Spider-Verse has shown us, it's that the most important thing about Spider-Man designs is creativity. But consider this guideline as a starting point in case you really don't know where to begin or are feeling a bit overwhelmed by all the possibilities. Another tip I have for you that really helped me out is to look at references because it will make your art just so much better than just trying to visualize things in your head. I was really pleased with how these poses came out and I think it really helped that I looked at references to get a better grasp on anatomy and how the body distorts at certain positions and angles. Though looking back on it now, one thing I feel that I'm still lacking is perspective. I think once I start incorporating more perspective into my poses, not being afraid to exaggerate proportions based on what is closer to the camera and what is further away, I'll really be able to create more dynamic and visually appealing compositions. For the design itself, 
I knew right away I had to incorporate water motif because that's the theme of my whole channel and YouTube persona. So I initially started with web fins that would look like water splashes and adding these teardrop gems in certain parts. Until I remembered how spider webs look after the rain, covered in drops of water. And I knew that was the perfect way to integrate water into the spider motif by adding raindrops caught in the web. I tried to follow my Sona's design as closely as I could with the head beads and fins, the skirt and boots, but gradually I began to veer away from those and started incorporating more Pentaxilat and Sundanese elements into it. This is the attire commonly worn during Pentaxilat competitions and sporting events, and I personally really wanted to integrate the sarung wrap and headband somehow. I think the skirt ended up translating beautifully into the sarung, and the headpiece I have is a really great start for the headband. I went on to fully clothe the rest of the character poses as well, until I started feeling like the headspace was too empty compared to the details in the waist area. This is another tip I have when creating drawings, especially in character design. The more detailed a certain piece is, the more the eye will be drawn towards it. So if there is a certain part of the character that you want to draw more attention to, then you could probably stand to add more detail around it. For instance, if you want the viewer to focus more on the character's face, then making the hair curl towards the face or adding accessories around the head would really help draw attention to there or if they have a really cool bracelet that could draw more attention to their hands and arms and etc. So because I wanted to draw more attention to the head area, I thought about adding a hair-like component that I pictured to be extra silks attached to the headpiece. And I was quite happy with how that looked because it gave a stronger impression of flowing water. I then proceeded to modify the shape of the belt sash to match the hair piece and make everything more cohesive. I wasn't completely sold on this look yet though, as looking at the full picture made the Sona a bit too reminiscent to the new Shira, which is a cool design, but not really what I was going for. I really wanted something for her head area though, because traditional Indonesian clothing is very big on headdresses, so it wouldn't really be Indonesian coded without. So I decided to reach back to my roots for inspiration. In Indonesia, there are a lot of different tribes, all with very different traditional clothing, customs, and even language, even if they're on the same island. I am from the Sunda tribe that is native to West Java, and while looking at our traditional clothes, I was struck with inspiration. A signature part of headdresses from Java are these jasmine strings that are usually worn for weddings and jaipong performances. I've drawn these chains before for a Tears of Themis fan art, but for my spider sona, instead of jasmines, I will be doing raindrops on spider web. <laughs> I was very pleased with myself for coming up with the solution, and they kinda looked like Tengen Uzui's head beads, which is awesome. I initially did two chains for each side, and as per our customs, one side, usually the right, is longer than the other. I ended up liking these raindrop strings way more than the hair silk, plus it just seemed a bit much to have both, and the hair silk took away from the sleek silhouette I was aiming for, so I decided to scrap the hair in favor of the raindrop strings. But looking at the overall design, something still felt off, and I knew it was probably the boots. As much as I loved them and how closely it matched my YouTube Zona, it just felt out of place with the rest of the design. Primarily because shoes, especially boots, aren't usually present for these types of attire. Pencaksilat and Jaipong, which are the two main inspirations for this design, are always practiced with bare feet, so having the character wear shoes didn't really feel authentic. So I tried replacing the oversized boots with the traditional form-fitting boots that most Spideys have and decorated it with the raindrop chain that she has across her forehead, which I think helped tie the design together better. 
After deliberating and going back and forth between the two, I decided that the jewel decoration felt more cohesive and scrapped the boots. I knew I wanted to create some markings for her face as well, but I wasn't really sure what to do. You'll start to see a pattern where when I start getting unsure of where to take the design, I look at my inspiration boards to get some ideas. And this time, I decided to reference the body paint pattern that Javanese brides wear to create this unique hairline for their special day. Though with the added side curl that Sundanese brides have for their hair. This design ended up becoming a bit of a fusion of Sundanese and Javanese influences. Also, as a bit of an FYI for my non-Indonesian viewers, which is probably most of you considering my audience demographic, although the Sundanese tribe is also located on the island of Java, they are ethnically and culturally distinct from the Javanese tribe, which refers to the tribe of people from central and eastern Java, which they themselves are further separated into several other tribes. But for the headdress, my main inspiration was Jaipong costumes, where the crowns are more contemporary and are a fusion of both Javanese and Sundanese influences, the dance being practiced in both cultures. It took a bit of work to get the crown to look exactly how I wanted, but I knew I wanted it to look like it's being connected by spider webs. Plus, it fit in perfectly with the beads and fins that I think really completed the headdress for me. Though, I think if I were to redesign my Sona one day, I would definitely modify how the crown looks. But it works for now. Now that the design is finally complete, we arrive at the canon event. If you follow me on any of my social media, you already know that my Spider Sona's canon event, which if you haven't seen Across the Spider-Verse, I'm not gonna spoil anything. If you know, you know was having to decide on a color scheme for her suit. And well, <laughs> here it is in action now. I must have gone through at least 10 different color combinations, so don't get attached to any of them. I spent two straight days on nothing but changing colors and I definitely had several breakdowns over the fate of this Sona and even really started doubting the design itself. I am naturally a very indecisive person. So this was not easy for me. I'm definitely a I can save them all type of person like Miles is. So it's really hard for me to let go of concepts that I like, even though I know that there's definitely a better option out there. <laughs> but I will be honest, there were some combos in there that I really liked. It just didn't feel enough like me. Maybe I'll use them for different variations of her suit, just like PS4 Spider-Man. So yeah, let me know what some of your favorite color combos were and maybe I'll come up with different designs for those colors. However, a more productive use of our time would probably be to talk about my Sona's backstory and powers. So my Sona has all the standard Spider-Man abilities of super strength, super durability, super flexibility, high intelligence, spider sense, and web slinging, but she has a few unique powers as well. As indicated by the raindrop motif throughout her costume, Mysona is a semi-aquatic spider that has increased swim speed, being able to shoot through the water like a dolphin, and perfect underwater vision. She also has increased lung capacity and circulation, allowing her to hold her breath for hours if she chooses. This also ties in perfectly with her using pentaxilat as a martial art because it heavily relies on the breath. It's pretty much the IRL version of breath techniques in Demon Slayer. This was inspired by several aquatic species of spiders, like the diving bell spider, which is the only species of spider known to live almost entirely underwater. And while trying to decide how long she should be able to hold her breath, I looked up the world record for breath holding, and it is a whopping 24 minutes and 37 seconds. <laughs> Which is crazy! I initially thought about giving her 30 minutes as her limit, but turns out that's just like normal human, so as a superhuman, I figured eh, she should be able to do more. But anyway, back to her powers. 
Taking inspiration from fishing spiders, which are covered in hydrophobic velvety hair that allows them to not break water surface tension, she also has the ability to walk on water, though it is very slippery to her, like being on ice skates, and prevents her from getting soaked with any kind of liquid, making her resistant to acid or poison splashes. So imagine that her costume feels like velvet as well. Mysona also shoots organic webs that become stronger whenever it is exposed to water, becoming stickier and harder to break. Her movement speed is also completely unaffected in the rain, because she can actually stick better on wet surfaces, preventing her from slipping and not having to slow down. As for her backstory, Mysona is a top medical student at Universitas Indonesia, the top-ranked university in all the country. Being the scholarly savant she is, she was hired as a part-time research assistant at the local Alchemax, where they were researching genetically modified spiders whose venom could be synthesized into medicine that could cure progressive diseases, such as multiple sclerosis, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and more. But it's still a work in progress, and the spider venom is still too dangerous and unstable for human testing. However, one night, while she was pulling in some extra hours of research, she falls asleep at the lab, unaware that one of the spiders had gotten loose and bit her while she slept. The next morning, she has become Spider Woman. Her work-life balance gets thrown completely out the door because between studying for tests and quizzes and preparing to be a medical doctor, she also has to go out and save the world from outrageous villains, saving lives in more ways than one. Unfortunately, that also means no time for romance. Yes, unlike most iterations of Spider-Man, Mysona does not have a Mary Jane or Gwen Stacy. She completely rejects romance and intimacy because I've decided that this Sona is Arrow Ace, especially when according to some people, particularly the Indonesian boomers, a woman could have the highest of education and commendable achievements, but at the end of the day, she will still just be someone's wife. Because once you get married, you're meant to quit your job, abandon your dreams, stay home, cook, clean, and watch the kids. I kid you not, that is something I have been told by multiple of my stepdad's boomer friends. And I also find that especially ironic that she would incorporate a lot of like wedding elements to her costume as well, maybe as a sense of irony to go against um, the expectations of society, showing them that a bride can be many things. Unfortunately, like all spider people do, my Sona would have experienced significant losses that made her value and prioritize life more than anything. Her Uncle Ben would have been her very first pet dog, who was also her best and only friend who was poisoned by some bastard neighbor that just hated dogs. Unfortunately, it's really common in Indonesia for people to poison other people's pets, and dogs are almost always the main target of these attacks because due to religious beliefs, most people have very contentious views on keeping dogs. And after that, she became determined to protect the weak, those who couldn't protect themselves. But yeah. At last, the canon event is resolving on screen. I happened upon this spider called the White Banded Fishing Spider and just really fell in love with the stripes on its legs. I'm not gonna put a picture up because it's pretty gnarly looking, so you can go and google it yourself. Let's just say it is exactly the kind of spider you think of when thinking about why people might be scared of spiders. Anyway, I added those stripes onto my Sona and was just absolutely in love with it. I knew I wanted to keep that design component for sure. I just wasn't sure of the colors. I leaned more heavily into the dark monochrome colors to imitate Wayang, which are Indonesian shadow puppets, but they could also be made of other material like wood or even be a play with human actors. And then tried the classic Kalimara pink and blue, but none of it just felt like me. Eventually, while looking for more inspo, I found this adorable spider called the flower crab spider, and it is pink! It's even called a crab, my favorite food, and also ocean theme callback, woo! 
I knew that's exactly the look I wanted to go for, and everything finally fell into place. So yeah, another tip you might want to employ is to just look at actual spiders and see which one strikes your fancy. It's definitely better than running around like a headless chicken, just throwing things against the wall hoping something sticks. It'll save you a lot of time, that much is sure. And here's the final result of my spider Sona. I've decided to call her Orchid Spider or Spider Orchid, either way works. And it is a reference to an actual flower called a spider orchid, which is also pink. But it is also a reference to Indonesia as a country itself, because orchids are one of our three national flowers. Let me know what you think of spider orchid in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in the pond for a while. I hope your skin didn't get too pruney. Big shout out to my lovely pond dwellers on Patreon. If you want to become a pond dweller and get early access to my content, join my Patreon. If you want to see more from me, then please follow me on all my social media. If you want to submit fan art or chat with me, join my Discord server. And if you want more of my stories, check out my Wild Word series here on YouTube because that will make me really happy. All the links are in my description and I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!